Hello, fellow constitutionalists, and welcome to the Dan Clement Show, a Christian political talk show. I'm your host, Dan Clement, your constitutional warrior fighting for your right just to be an American. It is February 2nd, year of our Lord, 2021. Remember, we are hyphen-free, PC-free zone. God is still in control and he does love you. And I am broadcasting from the Hemlock Studios here in the beautiful central Susquehanna Valley in the great Keystone State. And today, I, I have a, a really good article for you today. And it was... I just sort of came across it. It was in one of my news feeds uh, that I, I get. I have emails coming in from uh, a handful of news feeds that I trust. Uh, and I'm not saying every one of these articles comes from a... This one comes from the Gateway Pundit. Uh, sometimes I think the Gateway Pundit can be out there, but not near as bad as the lamestream media uh, gets. And this is actually a re, uh, published by permission from Real Clear Politics uh, by a gentleman named Frank Miley or Miley M I L M I E L E Miley I believe is the way you pronounce it. And his original title to this was "Enemies of the State versus Enemies of the People." It's a commentary. Now this uh, uh, Frank Miley uh, is a Trump supporter. He does believe that there was mass fraud in the election, as I do. Uh, I'm not necessarily a Trump report, uh, supporter, but, you know, uh, doggone it, uh, when things smell fishy, they normally are. And as I looked at the election, I thought for sure, I knew my candidate wasn't going to win Don Blankenship of the Constitution Party, but I thought for sure Donald Trump would, would beat uh, Basement Biden <laughs> every day of the week. And there's just there's too many situations that went on election night that are very questionable there are too many questions with all the lawsuits i actually downloaded uh about uh eight pdfs and other and other material where these lawyers and scientists and da statisticians and data managers went through the whole election and they've been putting these reports out uh, Arizona is going through and they're actually doing a, a full audit uh, of Maricopa County. I think another one, but definitely Maricopa County. And um, Maricopa County is fighting against that. Um, we just found out this morning in the news, I was watching the news, that the software company that's behind Dominion uh, has been hacked and probably hacked for months by the Chinese government, by the, the Chinese Communist Party. And that's... Not, it's not looking good for Dominion. Now they can they can pawn it off. Dominion can pawn it off. Say, well, that wasn't our fault. That was that was their fault. But you know, it, it doesn't change the facts of the matter that there was something fishy in Denmark when it, uh, this last November third in the election. And since then, it has been a full on onslaught by left leaning Democrats, the regressive wing of the Democrat Party. The lamestream media, uh, elitists, and I'm talking about elitists in academia. Uh, I have another one. I did a, I did a video uh, a week or so ago about uh, if it doesn't say it in the Constitution, the government can't do it. And yet the lamestream media keeps uh, bringing up these quote-unquote constitutional scholars that actually you're trying to tell people the Constitution says something that the wording of the Constitution doesn't support. The Constitution says what it says. We have the uh, framers, the founders. We have the, the Constitutional Convention debate notes that are in the Library of Congress. You can search them. You have the Federalist Papers. You have correspondence between the framers, uh, between themselves, and also between them and other founding fathers that weren't able to be at the Constitutional Convention but still had ideas and thoughts about the whole thing. And so it's mind-boggling to me that we have to reinterpret what the Constitution says today when we can see what it says in the original intent. And so this whole onslaught against conservatives in America, and I consider myself to be a conservative, although I'm not a Republican anymore. I guess you can call me a constitutionalist, uh, being a member of the Constitution Party. But I have really grave concerns of what's going on in the country I have grave concerns when the state, when the state can declare people enemies of the state apparatus, especially in our great republic. 
We have a representative republic, not a democracy. And it really worries me when you have the state pointing people out or groups of people out, like conservatives, Trump supporters, you know, libertarians have been pointed, you know, have been, you know, pointed out as being enemies of the state. And the problem with that, and, and, and listen to me when I tell you this, the problem with that is the state as far as the United States and the government in the United States is subservient to we the people. We are, by consent of the governed, we are sovereign over the federal government and the state governments. There has never been a time in world history where a government was formed and then the people came to it. That there was just a People walked up, I'll, I'll just pick on the children of Israel. They didn't, they didn't just walk up one day and, and say, hey, here's a government, and we'll just become part of that. It, it doesn't happen that way. You have to have people first before you can form governments. It's always been that way since creation. And it's no different here in the United States. There were governments, and I don't want to get into the whole thing about uh, the Indian tribes and that, but there, there wasn't an organized government here other than the uh, England and the British authority of the colonies that they established. That was, that was the government at the time. But even the colonies would not have existed unless there were people there first. There, the people came here before the British actually laid claim to the colonies. Uh, corporations, the Mayflower and, and the Jamestown uh, settlement, stuff like that. Uh, they were sent over here by corporations or by moneyed people uh, before the colonies were ever even thought of. And then the, the British Empire stepped in and claimed it as, you know, uh, Canada and, and the 13 colonies and, you know, parts of America as their territory or, or, co or you know, colonies as they call them. So I just did. And, and so the idea, the founding fathers had this idea that the people were sovereign even over, and this is this has been something that's been argued for hundreds of years before the founding fathers of America, that the people are sovereign over uh, the royals or royalty because they always had to have people before there was royalty. Where did the royals come from? <laughs> you know, the royals claim it was divine right, but people had to be around in order to subjugate so the people were always there before governments. And so I get real nervous about this term when, when they start naming enemies of the state, when the state actually starts naming its own enemies without any regards to who they're talking to. We the, the people, we the sovereign people of the United States that are the rightful controllers of the federal government and state governments and local governments. So I get, I get real antsy i get real concerned when the state starts pointing out enemies okay and i like the title of this uh, that frank put up here it's enemies of the state versus enemies of the people and i just want to read uh just a little bit uh from this now this is a a, a document a um, uh, open office document that i sometimes the website doesn't work right i go into a reading mode and it just it does not like reading mode, you know, where I take out all the ads and everything. So they, some websites have figured out if, if people go into reading mode, you can't see the ads, then it, you know, it just goes bonkers. Now, I have some open source software that gets around that. I don't know if they're ever going to get to that or not, and I had to use that to get to this. But the, um, let me get over to this. Uh, now, like I said, this is from the Gateway Pundit. This is what they published. And they titled it, I, don't, I didn't declare war on the establishment, it declared war on me. Uh, Frank Miley puts paper, puts to paper on what we're all thinking. And like I said, this was published on uh, February 2nd uh, of this year, uh, published by permission from Real Clear Politics, Enemies of the State uh, versus Enemies of the People. It's a commentary, okay? And I don't want to read the whole thing. I just want to read uh, what... Uh, what to Frank, Frank Miley put down here. Oh, excuse me. 
<clears throat> I got I got a little carried away there. The only reason I'm trying to click on it is because I got this little thing comes up. I ain't figured out how to get that off the document when I when I click on it. Now he's talking about when he says it, it is the state. Okay. It declared war on me when it supported energy policies that could enrich Saudi Arabia and Russia and would cost me money at the gas pumps and on my power bill. It declared war on me when it told me my ideas weren't worthy of debate and discussion or that they were even so dangerous they couldn't be shared publicly. It declared war on me when it used the police powers of the FBI and CIA to first spy on a presidential candidate and then worked to undermine the administration of that candidate after he was elected. It declared war on me when it told me my religious beliefs did not deserve the protection of the First Amendment. It declared war on me when it told me that boys could compete against girls in high school sports and that they could shower together afterwards. It declared war on me when it offered citizenship to illegal aliens and shipped American jobs to China. It declared war on me when it mocked the usefulness of a wall on the Mexican border and simultaneously put up a razor wire fence around the Capitol. It declared war on me when it tried to defend the police, or def excuse me, defund the police so that millions of Americans would be left defenseless against mobs from Antifa and Black Lives Matter. It declared war on me when it said, America was never great. It declared war on me when it told my children that they are not good enough because they are white. It declared war on me when it is said that defending the Constitution's rule on, on federal, rules on federal election is sedition. It declared war on me when it told me that I was a domestic terrorist and if I didn't believe the government's official pronouncements about elections, about free speech, and about right and wrong. Let's just say it plainly. The establishment declared war on me and all conservative Americans when it decided that leftist orthodoxy was more important than the Constitution. And he goes on down. I'll put the link to this article uh, in the show notes page. But he, <clears throat> he, he, he talks about, you know, he, he, later in the article, it talks about how Brennan, this is the former CIA director under Obama, was the mouthpiece for the state and how he, he went through a whole litany of things. But I just, I want to go back to the last thing he said. Let's just say it plainly. The establishment declared war on me and all conservative Americans when it decided that leftist orthodoxy was more important than the Constitution. And that's what I was saying at the beginning of the show when I put that video out. And I'm going to update or actually put another video out about that. How the leftists keep, keep attacking this idea that after a president can leave office, after a president can leave office, he can still be tried uh, for impeachment. The Constitution, try as you might, the Constitution has no wording to that effect in the Constitution. Yet their left-wing orthodoxy is more important than what the Constitution says. And they're, try, they're, they're, they're bringing out all these so-called so constitutional uh, experts to testify. Now this news, I don't know how many of them they've had out so far, have said basically the same thing. It's almost like they're reading verbatim the talking points of the lamestream media and the Democrat Party and, and, and left-wing orthodoxy. That, well, they can't just let them get away with crimes. Well, first off, there was no crime established. Not even, it, they say in the impeachment, yes. But there was no hearings. There was, there, the House broke so many rules, and I said this in the video, they broke so many rules getting to that impeachment, it wasn't funny. That's, that, that was the fastest 10-minute impeachment in the history of the United States. But, the, but like I said, the Constitution says what it says. And going back to the election, and what he said here, it declared war on me when it said that defending the Constitution's rules on federal elections is sedition. And they've said that time and time and time again. If you've watched lamestream media or if you're like me, you try to be fair to folks uh, when you're talking about what's going on. I, I, I use some left, leftist orthodoxy lamestream media websites 
to follow what they're saying. I, I now this news I follow. Um, I used to follow the Huffington Post, but they went so far left that they they don't even research and they don't footnote their articles properly. They always just their footnotes always go or their links always go to other articles that have no outside links other than Huffington Post. So I got rid of them. I mean, that's that's me. Maybe I was wrong to do so, but uh, I got rid of them. But there's there's some out there that are really pushing. Like now this news is very, very into the leftist orthodoxy. And they keep publishing things out there that just aren't true. And, and the problem with trying to debunk these folks, it, it would take... I'm a one-man band here. I'd literally need four or five research staffers just to combat the lies of leftist orthodoxy. And I don't want to do that. I want to, If that's all I did, you'd never hear the truth, other than me debunking things. But I don't want to be about that because reading and, and trying to debunk that left-wing orthodoxy is, is a downer. It's a huge downer. But getting back to the, 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 the election rules, most of what happened on November 3rd were in Democrat-controlled states, governors, mainly governors, and their administration, secretaries of state, and attorney generals, and I'm going to pick on Pennsylvania, and the courts, the Supreme Courts or lower courts in those states, changing election law. And people... People come out and say, well, PA Supreme Court, they can change election law if they want. No, they can't. All they can do is, is say that election law is unconstitutional, and if something needs to be amended in that law, all they can do is send it back to the state legislature. And that's the proper process to do. But we have an activist court here in the state of Pennsylvania, Supreme Court, very activist. And they write laws all the time. When they shouldn't be. They should be sending it back to the legislature and say, hey, clarify this, or we think this needs to be fixed. You guys debate it, put the bill back out. And if the legislature says, no, it's good the way it stands, the Supreme Court has nothing more to say about it. They have to interpret the laws it's written. They can't add to it. Can't take away from it unless it's unconstitutional. And there was nothing unconstitutional about the election laws, Act 77. Now, I didn't agree with Act 77. I don't think they should have passed that. But be that as it may, they did. And I've, I've heard uh, several Republicans in, in the state legislature saying they're going to they're gonna get rid of Act 77 uh, as soon as it can. Now, you know Governor Wolf isn't going to sign that legislation, but they need to get rid of it. But we were defending... I was defending election integrity based on constitutional law that the legislatures are the ones that determine the time, place, and manner of elections. Not the governors, not the Secretary of State, not, not the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania. It's the legislature. And there was there was just too, many, too much hanky-panky going on with this mail-in ballots and, 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 the, and the absolute fraud. The vote dumping, and like I said, I, I'm, I'm reading some stuff and I'll, I'm going to do that more in a podcast than I'm a video because it's going to be easier for me to get that stuff out in a podcast. And a podcast can be a lot longer than a video. But getting back to this article about the state declaring us an enemy. And, and they've been doing this for a long time. All the way through the Obama administration. America was never great. Sure we were. Did we have some, did we have some faults? Yep. Yep. Did we have some national sins? Yep. Slavery was a national sin. Do we have a national sin today? Yep. It's called abortion. I was just discussing with a guy today. Well, not everybody in, in the United States is at fault. Well, are, are you part of the United States? Yeah. Well, then you're part of the problem. Have you, have you been working tirelessly to abolish abortion in the United States? And please don't tell me you have. Especially when we've had a couple... Um, Houses of Congress and administrations that were all Republican, did they do anything about abortion? Nope. They just kicked the can down the road so they can use it as a political bludgeon against the Democrats every election. And in the meantime, millions of babies are, are dying. 
are being killed in the womb. This is a national sin, whether, whether you are participating in it or not. Go back to the Old Testament. Did everybody in Israel commit idolatry? Did everybody in Israel you know, worship false gods and foreign gods and relied on foreign nations for their strength instead of relying on God? No, not everybody. There was always a remnant. There's always a remnant. But guess what? Even the remnant pays the price for the national sin. Even the remnant pays that price. Yeah, we could be the remnant, 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 I'll get that out, uh, here in the United States today, us that are pro-life and, and, and talk out against uh, abortion. But if we don't get the abortion mills closed down and abortion stopped, not that we're going to be guilty, but we're going to suffer the consequences. And as God in the Old Testament saved the remnant, I believe he'll do the same thing today. He'll save the remnant as long as we're on his side when it comes to this. Um, we had a whole summer. I'm just going back up through this list. We had a whole summer with Antifa and BLM, and it's still going on today, even under the Biden administration. And uh, side note, BLM's been nominated by some left-wing wacko over in Europe for a Nobel Peace Prize. Has this, if, if, if all he's watched was the lamestream media, he's going to get a distorted view of what was going on. But they shouldn't be getting a peace prize. Black Lives Matter and Antifa should be cooling their heels in Huskow. They should be arrested and charged with insurrection. Actual insurrection trying to overthrow these legitimate city governments. That's insurrection. Not what happened on January 6th. That was not insurrection. It was occupation at the most. But I'm named the enemy of the state because I hold that view. And you won't hear it on the lamestream media how many, there's at least, from what I've been reading, there's at least a dozen Democrats that were inside the Capitol building, part of that occupation. And you don't hear the lamestream media talking about that at all. And I won't go as far as saying it was a false flag, but boy, oh boy, it sure smelt fishy. Um, the, every, everything that conservatives stand for, about the border wall, about uh, transgenderism, you know, about boys competing against girls in high school sports or even any sports, whether it's high school or professional or whatever. That's ridiculous. They, they don't need to be running to the finish line. They need to be running to get some mental health. That's what they need to be, mental help. Uh, that's where they need to be going. And, and I don't say that to be cruel. I think what's cruel is allowing people with a mental issue to think everything's okay. I think that's, I think that's cruel. I think that's inhumane. Um, our religious beliefs and our First, first Amendment protections, our Second Amendment protections, uh, Sheila Jackson Lee introduced a bill that if passed, uh, well... If it gets passed, it's going to be. It won't even be implemented because the uh, uh, the different. I'm I'm a member of the uh, U USS uh, GA, um, and NRA. There's other gun groups out there uh, that have already said that you know if, if this gets passed, they can't do anything until it gets passed. But if it gets passed and signed into law, then they already have lawsuits are going to challenge it, and it should end up at Supreme Court. And if they like precedence as much as they say they do, then um, the Heller case in Washington, D.C. should be the guiding principle of that. But uh, it declared war on me when it told me my religious beliefs did not deserve the protections of the First Amendment. And you might as well add in you know, my beliefs about the Second Amendment, shall not be infringed, and the arguments these people bring out. I, I, I had a lady... Um, Say this morning, well, we didn't have the, the machine guns like we did today. Well, they had the, the I believe it was called, I looked it up this morning, it's the Pucket gun, or Punket gun. It, basically, what it was, it was a single barrel, and it they, the guy, uh, Punket, the guy, the inventor, that got the patent on it, he actually demonstrated it. 
had a single muscle loader barrel on it with the flash pan. I think the flash pan was on the barrel, but I'm not, don't quote me on it, but it had a, it had a turnstile that had ball and powder. I guess the flash pan was probably on the, on the mechanism itself. You could fire, take, take, crank a handle out, rotate it, crank it back in, put some thing in it, and flat, and you could do that quicker than a man can manually uh, load a musket. And, and you had another guy sitting there that had a, maybe a couple of these, these little cylinders that were already, already loaded and primed. So all I do is pull the, pull the thing out, pull it, pick it up, put another one on. And he, he was, it was a rapid fire. So this argument that, that, oh, AR-15s, they're military rifles. Now, AR-15s are not, I don't want to get into that discussion, but they're just not. They're semi-automatic. Militaries do not rely on semi-automatic alone. Pistols, yes. Uh, rifles, nope. Uh, they either try burst or they're full automatic. That's just the case. And even then, why can't Americans own the same thing that the military owns? Law-abiding citizens that hasn't hurt a single person, why do they have to go through all the, the licensing and everything to, to, to be able to own a fully automatic weapon. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. And, and, and the Second Amendment, no matter how you want to slice and dice it, says what it says. It says what it says. Um, this is the one that really bothers me the most. It declared war on me when it told me my ideas weren't worthy of debate and discussion or that they were even so dangerous they couldn't be shared publicly. That's where big tech comes in. They're, they're, they're too, the ideas are too dangerous. Oh, you might hurt somebody's feelings. Some snowflakes out there might melt. Hell! Ideas in and of themselves aren't dangerous. It's the implementation of the ideas. Yes, Margaret Sanger's ideas about Planned Parenthood about uh, Negroes. She was a daughter of the uh, KKK. Uh, she was a racist through and through. She was a eugenicist that had all these ideas. Now, like I said, a lot of people have ideas, and yeah, some of them may be dangerous. Okay, but if they just remain ideas, and they can be either debunked or defeated, okay. It's when the implementation of these ideas, these dangerous ideas, like when Hitler took Margaret Sanger's and the American eugenicists and took it to its logical conclusion with the Aryan race and getting rid of the Jews, you know, the Holocaust on the Jews and that, that's when it becomes dangerous. But just talking about ideas in and of themselves are not dangerous. I would rather sit down with somebody that... The leftist orthodoxy says those are dangerous ideas and sit down and actually find out what their ideas are. And then if there's some either some moral component to them that, that make them morally wrong or some legal component that makes them legally wrong or, you know, just some common sense component that just makes them wrong. I'd rather sit down and discuss it with them. Shutting down communications between people just because you think or you deem their ideas to be dangerous. That's wrong. That goes against just about everything real conservative Americans believe. Now, the left-wing orthodoxy, they have no problem with that. They have no problem with shutting down uh ideas that they deem to be dangerous or the state deems to be dangerous and shouldn't be shared with the public. What's going to happen? And if you go, if you've done any type of economic research and I, I'm of the mind of the Austrian econ, economic economists, I'll get that out there in a second. I'm of the same mind as they are that when the state steps in and starts to control things, like trade, like free speech, like the Second Amendment, you're going to create a black market in these things. And that's just a, that's just a small list. It's, there's a big list. And, I, and go over 
uh, to the Foundations for Economic Education and just look up black market, just type in their search engine black markets. You'll get a, a, a litany of articles where they, they intelligently discuss how they come about and, and what they are and stuff like that. It's amazing. But when the, when, the, when the state starts cranking down on these things, that's when black markets actually pop up. And that's what'll happen. And that's what's been happening with social media. Parlor's been around since 2018, but they seem to have backed down. They fired their CEO uh, yesterday or today. I think it was yesterday. They fired their CEO and they're capitulating to big tech so they can get at least get the platform opened up. And the the biggest thing the biggest thing big tech had against Parler was they didn't agree with their ideas that they oh you guys gotta police those ideas. They're dangerous. Can't have them out there in the public. Now I was on Parler a little bit and it was more like an echo chamber, and I don't like echo chambers. Maybe it would have produced or became something else other than an echo chamber, but I just didn't like the echo chamber that was becoming. Uh, I'm on Gab, gab gab.com. Just look up Dan Clements on gab.com and they'll take you right to my profile page. Uh, I'm I'm a verified member. Uh, There, now, Gab, they keep off the bad stuff like pornography, pedophilia, uh, terrorist threats, stuff like that. But anything else, any idea, any other ideas, they let flourish out there, and it's up to the the us, the people that are on Gab. I can block things. You mean I can block something I don't agree with? Yeah, they're they're in my newsfeed anyway. I, I hardly get them anymore. I don't know. I, I doubt there's an algorithm, but even if there is, um, these. Folks that were just portraying um, Jewish people just as just the the I won't even, it's hard to describe because I, I I never go there I never go there but these these people were just they made Hitler look happy you know uh, and and so I just blocked them I blocked them I reported them because I didn't think that that type of stuff that that ideology I, I'm sorry I don't agree with it. And I don't think it should be. I don't think it should be shared. I mean, it should be discussed, but you're not going to share it on my timeline. And there's and there's other stuff too. Uh, I used to use minds.com, M-I-N-D-S, uh, dot com, but uh, they would not. I even asked them several times, "Why are you allowing pornography on your site?" Oh, it's free speech, man. Okay, done. I'm done with you. I quit using them. Um, I don't even know if I have a profile on there anymore. I tried to I tried to delete the profile, and at the time they were having issues, and I just I don't even go on there anymore. So if there's a profile on Minds, please forgive me. Uh, I'll try to go back over and check that. I just haven't hasn't been on my mind to, to go do that. But big tech, uh, the social medias, you know, uh, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, they're all cranking down on conservative thoughts and ideas that they deem are lamestream media or the state uh, deemed to be dangerous, okay? Uh, Google, you, you can't hardly use searches uh, to find some of this stuff anymore. I haven't used Google for years. Uh, I use a Gibberu, and I also use DuckDuckGo. And so far, I've not been stymied in my research as far as finding things. Uh, and I've actually done comparison research on Google and on DuckDuckGo and uh, DuckDuckGo is iffy on research and that because I think they still use a lot of the Google algorithms. The Gibberu has like an ancient Google algorithm that they've been building on aside from Google for years. And so their their search engine is, is way more open than, than Google's. Uh, so, you know, they're, you can't stop. Uh, you know they call you know it might be that might be considered the black market you know gab and and gibberu you know for search engine or uh quant is another one it's from france quant and it's spelled just like you think it sounds uh q u a w n t quant um i've found a lot of things on there you can't find on google um as far as uh alternatives to facebook and twitter and youtube uh gab's a good alternative to facebook and twitter 
Um, you can create gr groups on there. You can have friends on there. Uh, they don't have an actual friends friends. You just have people that follow you. And I think they're working on like sort of like Facebook that has family and friends uh, that can follow you. Um, we, I, I've actually started a Church of Christ discussion group on there. So there's a brother of mine, uh, Mike uh, Sullivan. He started one on, on Gab. Uh, my alternative to YouTube is BitChute. They're blockchain. Uh, even bitch, you can't take down my videos. And uh, now they, again, you um, critique the videos you want to see. Uh, you can block the ones you don't want to see or the, or the channels you don't want to see. I've never seen any pornography on bitch. I know there's some community guidelines on there. I guess they, they can't, I, I guess they can delete your profile. It's just the, the videos are very, very hard to delete because it is blockchain when you put them up there. So the word gets out. The, the word gets out. So this, you know, calling me an enemy of the state because the ideas weren't worthy of debate or they're even so dangerous they couldn't be shared publicly. It's not the state's proper function to tell me what I can say or to tell you what you can hear. Period. So I like his title. I'm going to wrap this up real quick because I've been, I've been droning on a little while here. I like Frank's original title of this, Enemies of the State versus Enemies of the People. I do not think that a state like our republic should have an enemies list of law-abiding citizens. And if it does, it needs to be held accountable for that. It needs to be taken to task for that. Dare I say it needs to be uh, to the point to where they need to be, charges need to be filed against these individuals in the state that are doing this. Now, as far as foreign enemies of America, yeah, we can have those. And can we have some domestic enemies that aren't citizens or that are acting so bad that they need to be like Antifa and BLM and movements like that? Yes, they need to be taken to task. But just, to, just it drives me nuts just to say that ideas are so dangerous that they can't be shared publicly. That just, that just drives me nuts. Because all you're doing is driving public discord underground. Public discord underground. You are, and it's just... And it's going to come back to bite them in the hind end. It really, really is. Now, enemies of the people, I, I believe we the people can have an enemies list of those in the government that are trying to subvert our Constitution, try to set aside what our Constitution says, and tries to enact policies that go against the Constitution, goes against our way of life, goes against, you know, freedom, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Um, you, you got somebody on the finance committee, Elizabeth Warren, that doesn't believe in private property. And private property is the cornerstone of any civilization. You won't have a civilization long if the people can't own and be secure in the property that they do own. So can the people have enemies list? Yep. And they need to be exposed. Now, can we debate these lists? Absolutely. We need to debate these lists to make sure the, the, the people are on them are, are there because they need to be on those lists. And what can we do about it? Well, what we need to do is Americans, there's 75 plus million Americans that are still pretty ticked off about the last election. What we need to do is instead of sitting back and watching Super Bowls and World Series and NASCAR, you know, my favorite sport, NASCAR. We need to be active. We need to get active in our election system and, and from the local level up, not from the federal level down. It's, it's hard to do that, but boy, we can make a lot of changes on the local and state level, folks. We really can. That, that will deter what the enemy of the people is doing or the enemies of the people are doing. And we can get these people out of positions of authority in the government. 
and then hopefully maybe even make some laws to keep them from coming back in as far as lobbyists and advisors that are being paid by politicians. Oh, we need to do something about that laundering, that money laundering bill there, but that's a whole other podcast there. Well, folks, this has been the Dan Clemens Show. I'm your host, Dan Clemens, your constitutional warrior. Remember, if you aim at nothing, you hit it every time. Be happy, be safe, and be thoughtful, folks. And just remember, God is in control and he still loves you. I'll see you guys on the next video.